Okay, we're live. Welcome back to the Here's the Deal channel. Thanks for joining. Let me know if you guys can hear me before we jump into this. We're going to be talking about this incident that happened in Phoenix. I'm not going to play, I'll play some of the video, like a couple seconds, but with YouTube's algorithm, they usually give, uh, you know, an age restriction. I don't want an age restriction, but if you want to see it, you can see the whole video. I just put the link in the chat room. You should really take a look at it before we start talking about this. It's two minutes and 28 seconds of pure tyranny. Pure tyranny. And also, before we get started, can you guys hear me okay? Got a one. Give me a five by five if you can actually hear me. There's a 20% discount on everything in the store uh, for, you know, shirts, hoodies, mugs, cell phone cases, whatever you want, any design that you want. You can put the design on the front, back, side. There's a really nifty tool that Spreadshirt has to, uh, to actually do that. There's over 110 items in the store that you can put on any shirt, hoodie, mug, cell phone case, or whatever. And again, it's 20% off until, th or through November 6th, through, through November 6th at, um, at midnight. So we're gonna take a look at this. I'm gonna play two seconds of this first clip because I wanna show you that this assailant who reportedly, and we're gonna read the report on this here in a second, but this uh, alleged gunman reportedly fired on the cops while they were in their cruiser. He stopped firing, ran into this convenience store, put his gun on the counter, got down in this kneeling position that you see with his hands up, completely submissive. When they told him to get down, he did. And he was being completely compliant. It almost reminds me of the position that Daniel Shaver was in when he was trying to obey the rapid fire commands of Philip Brailsford and the uh, Mesa thin blue line gang, but I'm going to play the, I'm going to, I'm going to try to stop it before the head stomp. So YouTube algorithm, I'm not playing anything that would be questionable. If I do happen to not hit the pause button when I should have warning, this could be graphic content. And if you're easily disturbed, you might not want to see it. If you do want to see this, and I suggest that you do take a look at it, the link again is in the chat room. I'll, if my mods can, you know, copy and paste that every so often, not, not spamming the room or anything, but I'm going to play the first two seconds of this just to show you that he's completely compliant and submissive and surrendering. And right there, you got the position that it seems like every law enforcement agent wants the rubber soles of his boot on the back of somebody's neck. Remember what, wasn't it Orwell who said, if you want a picture of the future, just imagine a, a government boot on your neck forever. So we're going to, we're going to take a look at this. Here's the article right here. <clears throat> and again, if you want to see it, I'm not, I'm not censoring it from you. I'm providing you the link so you can look at it. But you know, these r ridiculous age restriction videos are just crazy. They put you at the bottom of the stack. It doesn't get any views and all that kind of stuff. Video surfaces reportedly showing a Phoenix police officers beating a man investigation underway. I don't know what investigation you would want. You got two, two minutes and 28 seconds of video right here, which by the way, came from a bystander, a member of the public. And both of these cops you can see in the video later on have their body cameras on. This guy right here has got his body camera on right there. And when they take this guy away, you can see pretty clearly this guy's body cam. So both officers have their body cams on. And I wonder, because we've seen this in the past, but I wonder if there wasn't a bystander with her camera rolling. And the reason I say her is because she gets her hand in the way and there's long nails and rings on her fingers and it looks like a feminine hand, but you never know these days. But I wonder if we didn't have this footage right here, how long it would take for the Phoenix Police Department to release their edited, redacted version three years after the, the event when they're investigating themselves to find out if they've done anything wrong. So both officers have body cams on. I doubt this body cam would be released and I doubt we would even be talking about this in this video. I doubt this article would even be written because... As you know, those body cam uh, videos aren't very forthcoming oftentimes. 
A late Thursday night arrest by Phoenix police with the suspect injured was reportedly caught on camera and is now being criminally investigated by the department. Again, two minutes and 28 seconds of video showing what these cops did. What's there to investigate? It's not going to take days, weeks, months, years to investigate this, even though they'll probably drag their feet on it as they put these two guys on paid administrative leave and taxpayer money is going to fund them and support them. Harry Denman, 39, was taken into custody after reportedly firing at a pair of officers at a quick trip gas station near 59th Avenue and Buckeye Road, according to police. That's according to police. Now, if he truly did this, I understand somebody being angry at another person who shot at them because it's like, you could have killed us. You could have taken the breadwinner away from, uh, you know, their family. You know, so I understand this. But on the other side of it, this guy is not resisting, being completely compliant, is doing the universal hand signal for surrender, is complying with the officer's orders. And even after they have the cuffs and it, have him in cuffs and hogtied on the floor, they're still abusing him. And they don't just kick him. They don't just head stomp him and kick him. This guy with this rifle right here, he shoves the barrel of the rifle. It looked like it went kind of right here on his neck, probably hit part of his jaw, but it sent the guy into shock waves of pain. While the other officer had him down, pistol whipping with the barrel of his handgun. Why? While the guy is down and complying with his hands cuffed behind his back. That's called cowardice. I love that saying from uh, San Joaquin Valley, Valley Transparency. Officer safety is cowardice. Public safety is bravery. It's courage. It's integrity. Public safety is integrity. Officer safety, eh, not so much. An explicit video shared Saturday on Facebook shows a man, and thank God, thank God it was. Thank God it was. Because if it wasn't, I really doubt that these two officers would be on any kind of leave or would get any kind of reprimand or we'd see anything about this story. And they would probably commandeer the quick trip uh, internal security cameras and all that surveillance footage. An explicit video shared Saturday on Facebook shows a man purported to be Denman on the floor as he's beaten by two male officers standing over him. The video captures the man lowering himself onto the ground as an officer with a rifle aimed at him. And that's another thing. The guy with the rifle is constantly keeping that rifle on this guy's back, keeping him in a, in a very dangerous position. To kick his head against the tile floor, immediately after, another male officer approaches the man who's moving on the ground and stomps his head, the video shows. Both officers in the video shout expletive laden orders to the man telling him not to move to show his hands and ask him where his gun is from the get go. From the time this video starts, he's on the floor on his knees with his hands up in a submissive surrendered position. Video shows the second officer poking the man in the head with his gun. It wasn't just a poke, man. It was like, imagine a punch to your face. Only it's a punch with a gun in your hand. It wasn't, it wasn't just a poke. It wasn't kind of <laughs> Pillsbury Doughboy. While the officer uses his rifle, the other officer uses his rifle's front end to strike the man on his head. It, it, it does look like it hit his head. The video shows officers restraining the man's arm and handcuffing him before he turns on his side, followed by the officer with the rifle kicking him on the back and shouting another expletive. Uh, basically he says, I'm going to, I'm going to F and blow your head off. Oh yeah. This article says it right here. I'm going to F and they love to issue those threats. Don't they? The man then cries. Oh God, please. The video shows his blood spatter is visible on the floor near his head as the officer with the rifle resists his, uh, uh rests his leg on him. I'll blow your F and head off, dude. W why would you do that? Officer? You already have him handcuffed. He's already writhing in pain. So why would you continue to threaten that you're going to blow his head off? What's, what, what, what threat does he uh, present to you at this present time? I blow your effing head off. The officer with the rifle is heard saying on the video to restrain the man shortly after adding F you dude, don't effing shoot at us. And again, I can understand people being upset with somebody who shot at him, especially let's say it's you or me. And we're with our family in the car and we're getting gas or we went to the convenience store and we paid for our gas or whatever. And then somebody starts shooting at us and you run into the store <clears throat> to apprehend the guy. 
and you're pretty pissed off at him because he could have ended your life. But upon encountering this guy, he's already put his gun down. He's already gone, oh man, I'm sorry. This guy is probably mentally ill. This, this guy probably doesn't know what he's doing. And yes, I understand the other side of it. You play stupid games and you get stupid prizes. And boy, did he get his share of stupid prizes. I mean, he got enough stupid prizes for, you know, 10 years worth of, uh, you know, Halloween candy or whatever. Like they, they really racked up on the prizes on this guy. Some seconds later, the man is heard on the video saying he's sorry and please don't kill me before he's lifted up by the officers as he pleads for his glasses, which are left behind as the three walk out of view and filming appears to end. And I thought for I thought for a second, I was like, they're so vindictive toward this guy. They're so pissed off at him. They'll probably stomp his glasses and just, you know, crunch him under their feet. But they just walked away and his glasses are sitting there on the ground. What is depicted in this video is not how we train and is not aligned with the core values of the police department said the police chief let's uh let's hear what they report here on this uh i had this pulled up let me let me refresh this see if it'll play i'm gonna go i'm gonna fast forward one of the kicks landed even after he was in cuffs denman was taken to the hospital for treatment before being taken off to jail. Chief Michael Sullivan, who was sworn in on Friday, placed both officers on leave pending an investigation. Look at this. The guy's constantly got his rifle stuck in this guy's back. In a statement released not too long ago, he said, as soon as additional information regarding this incident came to my attention, immediate action was taken. What is depicted in the video is not how we train and is not aligned with the core values of the Phoenix Police Department. Chief Sullivan went on. To how about saying what's depicted in this video is criminal activity and we we decry this kind of activity. We don't train our officers to do this and they're going to be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. How about that? It's like we, we don't really need an investigation. I saw what I saw. I can believe my own eyes. We don't need to do this. I mean, go ahead, do this internal investigation so you can seal up the case and bring it to court or whatever. But, you know, the video does record what the video records and the video camera doesn't lie. Police do, though. To promise a thorough, fair and transparent investigation. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure there's going to be a thorough, fair and transparent investigation. If things are so transparent at the Phoenix Police Department, how come there's so much police abuse coming out of the Phoenix Police Department? Riddle me that one, Batman. Denman pulled a handgun and fired two shots within close range of the two officers' patrol car as they were driving out of the parking space in the convenience store parking lot. We, You know, if he did do this, we still don't know the whole story. Was he shooting at the police officers? Was he trying to defend himself? We just don't know. A bullet struck the car's spotlight, piercing through the driver's side at head level while the other bullet hit the ground, police said. If that's true, I can understand the guys, the officers being angry, but that still doesn't justify their actions against a guy who's clearly complying and surrendering. The officers had just talked with Denman and they told him that they were leaving to respond to a call. Phoenix police said the situation escalated, and yes, it did. When Denman fled into the store with officers following him inside and confront the confrontation ensuing before the arrest, the department said the store was unoccupied, which is not true. So that if, if it's true that the department said the store was unoccupied, you can see other people in there. It was obviously occupied by the bystander who was recording it. It was occupied by a guy with a red shirt behind the camera, and you can see other people talking and the cops talking to other people. So the department, I mean, the, um, the store wasn't, the quick trip wasn't unoccupied, but the video shows what appears to be other people in the background. Yes, it does. So if the, if the police department isn't even going to get, going to get this right, that you can clearly see and verify from the video, what are the chances that they're on, after their investigation, that they're going to get everything right on that? Thank goodness for video cameras, man. Video cameras are like the great equalizer. Video cameras are like kryptonite to superman video cameras are to cops like kryptonite is to superman they hate it they hate video cameras they hate the people who hold video cameras they don't want transparency they don't want their deeds to be publicly shown and if they were good officers don't you think they would wouldn't wouldn't your mentality if you were a good officer be man the more cameras and the more angles the better we want people to see how good we are and how good we're acting and how just we're being. 
and how much we really care about the public. If I was a good officer, if you were a good officer, wouldn't you want, man, I want cameras on every street corner so they can see the good job that we're doing. Maybe I'll get a raise out of it. But no, that's not how they think. They think, man, the more cameras, the more camera people, the more uncomfortable I feel because then I can't plant the drugs. Then I can't do that false hit on that car. Then I can't trample over that person's fourth amendment right to be secure in the person's house's papers and effects when I'm rifling through their things. Where are the good officers? And if there are so many good officers, how come time after time after time, when you see not just one, but two, three, four, five, ten 10 officers appear on the scene, not one of the officers stops the bad officer from committing a crime against a member of the public. Not once. You don't ever see it. Never. So how can you claim to be a good officer if you just watched your fellow officer, your fellow thin blue line thug, just kick somebody in the head who had their their hands cuffed behind their back? How can you call that person a good officer? You and I couldn't stand there in good conscience watching your buddy kick somebody, kick the snot out of somebody. You'd have to say something or you'd be restraining or you'd be reporting or you'd be doing something. So there are only three kinds of cops, the cop that foists the criminal activity, the cop that sees the criminal activity being done, but he chooses to remain silent. And then the cop who blows the whistle on the whole thing and realizes, Hey, I'm a part of a crime ring here. And then he's not an officer for very long. Those are the only three kinds of officers I know that exist in humanity and have ever existed in humanity. Denman was injured and taken to a local hospital before being jailed. According to police. (laughs) I wonder if that's true. Because that's according to police. And when police tell you something, well, I don't really, I don't readily believe it right off the bat. Got to do some investigating. Is that true? The department said both officers were uninjured. Well, that's clear. The department said it learned on Friday of the officers reported, uh, of the officers reported actions reported. How about recorded? How about recorded actions? During the rest, an investigation was started. There is a criminal investigation in addition to an administrative one, according to police, the department takes instances of potential officer misconduct very seriously. Ain't no potential about this police department, Phoenix police department. The department takes instances of potential officer misconduct very seriously. God, How about recorded and verified and objective officer misconduct? What, how do you feel about that? We will wait for and we'll wait for additional information and the full investigations to be complete before coming to any conclusions. I think a, I think a five year old who's got his head screwed on right can take a look at this two minute and 28 second video and come to a conclusion pretty darn quick. And, you know, the people who uh, who reported on this, they've seen the video. They know what's going on. They know it's not just reported. They know it's not just potential officer misconduct leave a put a one in the room. If you think this is officer misconduct, leave a one in the room. If even though, you know, the cops are angry about being shot at and they could have been killed and you know, a loved one could have deprived been deprived of a breadwinner. Let me know if you think after you watch this video here, I'll put it up. I'll put the link in the, in the chat again. If you haven't seen it, there's the video so you can watch it. Let me know if you think this is truly officer misconduct, i.e. criminal activity. Because I'll tell you what, if you or I did this kind of stuff and they, if the cops saw you, let's put it this way. If the cops saw you do to this guy what the cops did, I can guarantee you, you'd be arrested, thrown into the back of the cop car, taken to the station, fingerprinted, and hear the jail cell close behind you. I guarantee you that the cops would see you as a criminal, even though this guy shot at you, he put his gun down on the counter and now he's doing this to you and you're kicking the snot out of him. The cops would restrain you, handcuff you and take you to prison. So if we just use their standard by their own standard, they committed criminal activity that warrants taking somebody to jail and removing them from society. The officers who have not been identified are on leave. Of course they are. It's paid leave. Don't worry. They'll be okay. Don't worry. They'll get a job in another county if they do happen to lose their jobs on this one. 
which they probably wouldn't if that bystander wasn't recording. That's why it's so important, guys. There's so many there's so many instructional moments here. That's why it's so important to take the time and stop and record. If you see a member of your community who's being pulled over and harassed by cops, wouldn't you want somebody to stop and record so that you can have a documentation that you can take to court and prove your innocence? Yes, I would too. As of Tuesday afternoon, Denman did not appear in jail custody. Oh, maybe he didn't make it to jail. Chief Sullivan promises a thorough, fair, and transparent investigation and vows to hold. How about a how about a swift investigation? How about get back to us later this afternoon? We'll give you eight hours. You only need two hours, uh, two minutes and 28 seconds, but we'll give you eight hours. At the end of the day, you need to tell us what you're going to do with those police officers because they really should be behind bars. We don't want people roaming around in the public that have this kind of temperament. Promises a thorough and fair and transparent investigation and vows to hold officers and any other employees who violate the law or policy accountable. In August 2021, the U.S. Department of Justice announced it was going to investigate the Phoenix Police Department partly due to allegations of excessive force. And I looked that up. And yes, here is the Department of Justice from, you know, everybody's favorite, Merrick Garland. But it says Justice Department announces investigation of the city of Phoenix and the Phoenix Police Department. You know it's bad. You know you're a bad department. If you got you've got a whole bushel of bad apples when the Justice Department is going to investigate you. That's how you know you've kind of gone over the edge. Attorney General Merrick Garland and Assistant Attorney General Kristen Clark for the Civil Rights Division announced today that the Justice Justice Department has opened a pattern or practice investigation into the city of Phoenix and the Phoenix Police Department. That's how bad the Phoenix Police Department is. And we know just from just from seeing the um, all the reports coming out from independent journalists in the uh, First Amendment auditing community, Phoenix and Mesa, Arizona are pretty bad places. I mean, you, you talk about the thin blue line gang being bad everywhere. Yes, it is. But, you know, when you look at Phoenix, you got a concentrated form of evil that, uh, you know, it's pretty hard to dispute. It is there. All right, guys, I'm going to end this right here. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you guys joining the live stream. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell notification icon. Give it a thumbs up. Share it with everybody you know. Subscribe to my private email list through my website, highimpactflix.com, in case they tick us down. we got a way to communicate. And all the shirts... Hoodies, mugs, everything in the store is 20% off through November 6th at midnight. So there's 101 designs you can put, and surely there's a design here you can uh, think of for yourself or a family member. It does support the channel. If you want to support in other ways, the links are in the description below. I appreciate you guys, and I will see you in the next Heavily Censored Shadow Band live stream. What I'm going to do before I leave this chat is I just put the... <clears throat> I just put the Twitter link for the video so you can watch the entire video that we just talked about. But the police, uh, Phoenix Police Department, in my opinion, is completely out of control doing this to a guy who's submissive and in a surrender position. So I'll see you guys in the next live stream. Please share this video. Take care.